You don't need everyone that you think you need. You're depending on too many people. You don't need all of your co-workers to support you. You don't have to have all your friends and family members cheering you on. The less you depend on people, the greater the anointing in your life. If you've ever been good to somebody who wasn't good back, if you've ever poured yourself into an individual, a company, a place, or thing, and didn't get the results you expected, if you've ever had a moment in your life that you have measured yourself and come up short, this message is for you. If you've ever given your best to somebody and they act like it was nothing at all, then this one is for you. Move on. Forget them. They are lying and they are untrustworthy. So move on. You got to see them for what they are. That person is not who you thought they were. So move on and at the risk of sounding callous, get over it. Are you discouraged because people are not giving you what they used to? It's because God's growing you up. Quit trying to get from people what only God can give. Go to Him for your value, your self-worth, for your encouragement. If you'll start passing these tests, not relying on people, you'll not only live more confident, more secure, but I believe and declare you're going to overcome obstacles that looked insurmountable, accomplish dreams that seemed impossible, and reach the fullness of your destiny. You cannot hang out with a bunch of defeated, going nowhere, no vision men and be an overcomer. You are who you hang around. I want you to listen at them and think about you because it is possible to develop a mentality to fit your environment that simply makes the best of a bad situation. I'm not happy. I'm not getting the most out of my life. So I'm going to bring my expectation down to my reality and enjoy the fact that at least they didn't carry me off to the board today. I'm still here. No one is such a real enemy as a false friend. The worst thing you can do when somebody hurts you, listen, the worst thing you can do is to harbor your hurt because harbored hurt becomes burden bearers. Not most of the time, not a lot of the time, every single time. If somebody hurts you and you hold it in and you brood over it, harbored hurt becomes burden bitterness. When someone breaks our trust, we question ourselves too. Like we think my judgment's bad because I totally put my faith in this person and look what they did to me. So you gotta build that trust up back again with yourself. How do you do that? Read, learn, work out, be alone. It's okay to be alone. It's okay. There's no big deal. Enjoy it. Do something productive and build that trust up in yourself. You know, look back at the situation, learn from it. You must be very intentional and deliberate. You're not gonna wake up one day and find a law degree. You're gonna have to work for it. And your problem is, you wake up on Monday, you might be strong, but by Wednesday, you're not intentional and deliberate. You are hoping that the best is gonna to happen to you and the best never happens to you. If you look in the mirror tomorrow and say that, you will change. Because nobody likes thinking of themselves as a failure. I don't want you to keep doing dumb stuff and say, my life is miserable. No, your life is not miserable. Your ability to make adjustments, to make corrections is messed up. And you're too slow. You're too casual. You think too much. You need to get in a hurry. The separator is going to be who takes massive action quickly. They print money. They don't print time. They don't print opportunities. You can lose money and get it back. You can't get time back. You can't get experiences back. Average people focus on money. The greats focus on time, because I can't get my time back. If for 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, what would you be like? What would happen if you just stopped wasting the opportunities that are in front of you? You'd be 10 times more efficient. You have no idea how efficient, efficient people get. If you want to make your dream become reality, 
the people that are running at their dreams know that it's possible that you can live your dream, that it's necessary, that you're relentless, that you have a plan of action, that you are creative. The people that are living their dream are finding winners to attach themselves to. The people that are living their dreams are the people that know that it's, if it's going to happen, it's up to them. And they're resolving within themselves, it's not over until I win. The people that are running after their dream know they're going to have hard times. They keep on running because they're saying within themselves, I'm the one, I'm the one. No matter how bad it is or how bad it gets, I'm going to make it. The people that are running after their dreams are the people that are hungry. The key is time is precious. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency and their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences, their intensity, their frequency. When should you start the day? As soon as you have it finished. Plan the day the best you can leaving plenty of room for improvising and surprises and all the stuff that happens during the course of the day. But if you've planned a good, productive day, now you start that day, you can't believe how much more valuable your time will be. Don't start the day until you have it finished. Now here's the next one. Don't start the week until you've had it finished. Now to lay out a week is a pretty good challenge. And then here's the big one. This is really challenging. Don't start the year until you have it finished to the best of your ability. It can't be finished like minute by minute. But in terms of the sweep of what you want to accomplish, make sure that that's set and ready to go by the time January 1st rolls around. And it might get all upset. It might get torn up and you do a new one. You make so much progress the first 90 days that now you've got, you've multiplied it all by two, by three. Because that happened to me. I thought, wow, here's how, this is gonna be a great year. By the time I'd finished the third month, I'm rolling, I'm sore. So many things are happening, I revised my whole year's plan. Next key, to time management. And that's work longer and harder. But see, there's a limit to that. I almost lost my health the first year. I went so crazy about personal development and achievement. I just went bonkers. You know, I told you I was skinny. By the end of that first year, I was a walking shadow. And then it suddenly occurred to me, what if I got rich and too ill to spend it? I mean, that was a shocker. So I started, you know, developing a little more reasonable because I said, if 12 hours won't do it, I'll work 14. If that won't do it, I'll work 18. I mean, how many hours it takes? And sure enough, it cost me too much. So see, working longer and harder for some might be appropriate. Here's the key, not to work harder, but smarter. We give up so quickly. The first time we get turned away, we go home. The first person that doesn't like us, the first person that doesn't help us, the first time it gets a little hard, many of us are so quick to see disappointment as a dead end. If you can't get in, go up. If you can't get through on this level, go up to a higher level. Sometimes the reason God allows you to be restricted is because you're at the wrong level. And sometimes he'll put a disappointment in your life, so you have to climb over it. Restoration will come. Healing will come if you won't give up. Anytime trouble comes, anytime heartache comes, anytime disappointment hits their life, rather than face it and walk through it, they quit, they back down, and they waste their pain. Pain has a purpose. Don't let your pain define you. Let your pain refine you. Now, our job is not to be the uh, person who exposes betrayer. Our betrayers, our job is to make sure that we stay resilient enough to know that betrayers are going to come and go, but we're going to walk by faith and not by sight. And we are going to forgive people. We are going to enjoy our life. People, they go through something that was supposed to be a season, but instead of it being a season, it dictates their entire life. You met people that instead of getting better, they just got bitter because of the pain. 
before you know it, their entire identity is wrapped around their issue. It's wrapped around this moment of heartache, this moment of disappointment. You've met people that have been betrayed by a friend and instead of forgiving, instead of rising back up, instead of being the friend that they're looking for, they isolate and they back down. You meet people that their dreams never came to pass and because the dreams never came to pass, they just now become a critic of anybody else who goes for their dreams. Stay on your path, stay positive, stay encouraged, keep praying. I want you to start praying specific prayers, and that way you're going to start witnessing God bless you specifically. Don't feel like you're being greedy or over the top. It's beautiful to recognize when you're blessed, but it's okay to start asking for blessings. And so right now, in this era, where we are, the people that are going to come out on top, the people that are going to get control of their destiny, the people that are going to maximize this place in history and be fortified in terms of their mental resolve and families and their skills and their ability to create incredible wealth are people that are using their times more productively. The people who take the time to learn something new every day. If you're not willing to learn, nobody can help you. If you're willing to learn, no one can stop you. 80% of the things we do are busy things that we do in an area that is not effective. The average person only spends 20% of their time doing the thing that they are really gifted at, created at, excited to do. And the rest of it is all the dumb stuff that we all have to do in order to survive. Wonder what would happen if we would go from doing 80% of things that are busy but not effective and 20% of the things that are really effective if we would switch those numbers around and only give 20% of our time to the things that we have to do and 80% of our time to the thing that we were created to do. If you'll be faithful, if you'll be disciplined when the amounts are small, will make you a ruler, give you a position of authority when the amounts are many. Take care of your disciplines when the amounts are small, and then life will see to it that you get some extraordinary numbers to work with. Do not disregard the smallest of disciplines. Do not neglect the smallest of disciplines and build on that foundation, and you can have everything you could possibly want. Get going. Don't stop at where you are as if it were the destination, when in fact, in reality, it may be the transportation that brings you into that thing you were created to do. Now if you want to start walking among the heavyweights, here's the key. Don't start the year until you have it finished. I don't want to kid you, this one is difficult. It's reserved for those few who do and become the superstars in accomplishment, enterprise, wealth, influence, and lifestyle. It's a high road of sophisticated disciplines, but I'm positive you will like the view and the taste and the company. A game plan is merely a spreadsheet for your activities. It can be a game plan for a day, a week, a month, a year, several months, or several years. And a game plan can be for a single project or for a variety of concurrent projects. Here's how it works. On a sheet of graph paper, you make vertical columns for the weeks or months that this plan is to cover. Then, on the left side of the paper, you make a heading called activities. Under this heading, you list all of the activities to be performed within that time frame. Let's say that part of your business requires providing ongoing training programs for your employees. Under the column marked activities, you merely list the various training programs you wish to conduct for the next 12 months. Then under the vertical columns for each month, you block off particular periods of time for these training classes. Game plans can be used to help you plan almost any aspect of your business or enterprise. They can also be used to help you organize all areas of your life, from investment plans to reading plans. 
Game plans are particularly useful when it comes to scheduling family time, vacations, special weekends and trip, and so forth. Everyone who is important to you wants to see where he or she is on your game plan, especially if your business often requires you to spend a lot of time away from home. And remember, there's nothing like a visual plan. It's so much more effective to be able to show members of your family where they are on your game plan as opposed to merely telling them in conversation. Now, a game plan can be as detailed as you wish. And please be forewarned now that you are probably going to tear up several before you get what you want. This is something you have to work with. Every game plan must be tailored to fit a particular need. The chart you use for your personal plans may not necessarily be suitable as a chart for your business plan. Here is another key benefit of using game plans. If you have your plan in your projects book or up on a wall somewhere, it serves as a constant reminder to get busy on all the activities you have scheduled. Or, if there are a lot of blank holes beside the activities you have listed, your plan reminds you to get busy scheduling them. Now you might well ask, doesn't a calendar do the same thing? Not really. Many of the events on your game plan will be on your calendar, but here are the major differences. First, the visual reminder of the spreadsheet and the list of activities on the left that have no corresponding time assigned to them on the right serve to remind you of what is not yet done. A calendar just won't give you that kind of information. And second, it is so important to take a look at three months, six months, one year at a time for highly effective planning. With a game plan, you can get a sense of the whole picture of the time frame and all of the important activities at one look. To effectively design something, you just have to have a picture of the whole finished project, complete or as complete as possible. Game plans are both exciting and painful. Painful because of all the things you must get on with and plan, make up your mind about, or give serious thought to, and painful because they illustrate how far behind you are sometimes, but they are also very exciting, both because they help you to foresee how your life, your business, and your family are going to unfold over the coming months, and because they can help you get the job done. It's like looking at the artist's rendering of the finished project. It brings all kinds of feelings to the surface as we see it all take shape and unfold. And it also gives you that incredible feeling of being in charge. You have your life in hand and in order and well designed. Remember how valuable a day is. It is part of your whole life enterprise. A day is like a piece of the mosaic of your life. Fashion it wisely to the best of your genius. For as someone once said, at midnight, the winged messengers come and gather up all these pieces and take them off to wherever the mosaic is kept. And surely on occasion, one messenger says to another, wait till you see this one. A well-fashioned day with a beginning and an end, a purpose and a content, a color and a character character, a feel, and a texture. This well-fashioned day takes its place among the many and becomes a valuable memory and treasure, an equity of experience and spirit and life. And remember, the genius to do all this lies within you. Never forget that. He said, listen to Paul Harvey every day. So you want to be a disc jockey? Yes, sir. He said, I want you to create your format. What will your personality be? What style are you going to have? I said, wait a minute, sir. I want to be a disc jockey, but I don't have a job yet. And then he said something. He said, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not pay. He said, you got to expect to become successful. Let us say together, I expect to win. I expect to increase my recruitment. I expect to be a great presenter. I expect to become a millionaire. It's my time. It's possible. It's necessary. It's me. It's hard. It's worth it. Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. Your homework assignment and write down five reasons that will make it worth it to you. So when the tough times come, and they're going to come, when you feel like you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that's a part of the process, your reasons will be your rod and staff to comfort you, to take you through the storms of life. He told me, you want to be a disc jockey, practice on your communication skills. Visualize yourself talking to thousands of the students. See yourself on stage presenting. Be willing to invest 
invest in yourself. Warren Buffett was being interviewed by a financial analyst on CNN. He said, what's the most important investment a person can make today? Warren Buffett, a billionaire, has billions of dollars in the stock market, billions of dollars in real estate. He looked at the reporter and said, the most important investment you can make is in yourself. The reason you are here, the reason you invested your money, your time and energy and transportation and the room and all the costs in a so-called tough economy, because you have the mindset of a billionaire. You know investing in yourself you are your most treasured asset give yourselves a round of applause come on bring energy level up so he said mr brown i've done all that i can do for you you've got to go out and face the music go with the things i've taught and make it happen i went to wmbm radio station on miami beach milton butterball smith was a program director hello mr butterball my name is les Brown, sir i like to be at this job he said young man you have any journalism in your background no sir i don't you have any experience in broadcasting no, sir, I don't, but I practice every day. Show you how good I am. He says, no, we don't have a job. How many have been rejected? Raise your hands. I was devastated with rejection. I went back to Mr. Washington. I said, Mr. Washington, they said, no. He said, don't take it personally. Most people are so negative, they have to say no seven times before they say yes. He said, you got to be hungry. Go back again. I said, yes, sir. I went back again. Hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you, sir? I mean, it's Les Brown, sir. I like to be a disc jock. He said, I know what your name is is weren't you here yesterday yes sir didn't i tell you no yesterday yes sir he said then why are you back today i said well sir i i didn't know whether or not somebody was laid off or somebody was fired sir no one had laid off a fire and i get on out of here i came back the next day talking loud looking happy like i was seeing you for the first time i said hello mr butterball how are you my name is Les Brown, sir. I'd like to be a disc jockey. He said, I know what your name is. Weren't you here the last two days? I said, yes, sir. Didn't I tell you no the last two days? I said, yes, sir. He said, then why are you back today? I said, sir, I, I didn't know whether or not someone got sick or someone died, sir. He said, no one got sick or died. No one was laid off a of fire. Now, don't you come back here again. I came back the next day, talking loud, looking happy, like I was singing for the first time. I said, hello, Mr. Butterball. How are you? He looked at me with rage. He said, go get me some coffee. I said, yes, sir. Call your grandson and tell him he still wants you. Call the prison and tell your son he still wants you. And that daughter that shamed you and embarrassed you and hurt your feelings, tell her, come as you are. You ought to just come. You ought to just come right now. You ought to just come. You ought to just come. You ought to just come right now. Tell him. Tell him he's waiting. He's been up every night looking out the window waiting on his son to come back. I know you come to church, but do you really come to him? He's waiting. His arms are outstretched right now. Some of you have been Christians for years, but you are still carrying deep shame. It shows up in your relationships, and it shows up in your situations, and it shows up in what you won't go after and what you won't do. He loves you. He loves you. He doesn't have to love what you did to love who you are. I gotta go, but I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in this place. Ow! God is here!
I want to have a conversation with y'all about unapologetically getting rid of all things, people, and situations that no longer belong in the new season of your life. Some of y'all came up with New Year's resolutions. You've already fell apart. You've already fell apart. New Year's resolution, Happy New Year. It's supposed to be Happy New You Year. All of your bad habits, surroundings, and situation, personal relationships that didn't make sense for your life back then. You're supposed to step into the Happy New You Year. So many of y'all are mental and spiritual psychological warfare so many of y'all are in spiritual chains you are spiritually behind bars you are stuck you are institutionalized most of us have two eyes and we still can't see can't clearly see all of the, the scams the people's motives God sends us bold signs and wonders tells us to change our environment and our surroundings so that we can reach the ultimate level of being blessed. I really think that if you get rid of the trash in your life, that can be people, business, and situations, you too could really, like I really believe that you can reach your full potential. I want you to fly. I want you and your career and your financial blessings to bypass me. This is a good word for anybody who you've been, you've been dealing with depression, but you've been drinking to get through it. Now, depression is something that happens to a lot of us. I mean, I don't know anybody who hasn't had a season of darkness in their life. But if I try to drive out darkness with darkness, and I depend on something in the darkness that is going to make me addicted to something even when the light comes up, the second storm is worse than the first. And a lot of us are dealing with loneliness right now in this season. That's a storm that you can't always control. But if you run to places in the storm that are more dangerous than the storm itself, how many times have you, have you left a place that you didn't like? And the problem is, you can't change if you never stay. Staying power. Staying power. A subject that altered my life forever. It was just unbelievable. I hadn't known my mentor, Mr. Show, very long until one day he said, Mr. Ownsh, let me see your current list of goals. He said, I've had a lot of experience and I've been out here for a while. And he said, let's go over them and maybe I can really give you some good ideas. And I said, I don't have a list. He said, well, he said, if you don't have a list of your goals, he said, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundred dollars, which he did. That got my attention. I said, you mean my bank balance would be a lot bigger if I learned how to set goals? He said, drastically bigger. That got my attention, so I finally said, hey, I want to learn how to set goals. It is a fantastic skill to develop how to design your own future. So make the note, life best lived is life by design, not by accident, not just, you know, walking through the day, careening from wall to wall and managing to survive. You know, that's okay. But if you can start giving your life dimensions and design and color, and objectives and purpose. The results can be absolutely staggering. Key phrase, here's a chance now to use your imagination because the imagination builds cities, imagination conquers disease, imagination develops a career, imagination sets up a relationship. Imagination is where all tangible values and intangible values begin in the imagination. So what you've got to learn to do is use this powerful resource. Now, sometimes all by ourselves, it's a little difficult sort of to get it going. That's why a little workshop like we're gonna do today is sometimes very helpful. When someone does a little coaching and says, how about this, this niche? You say, I never thought about that. That ought to be easy to do. And the first thing you know, you're going. And uh, that's why that is so important. But now tapping this resource of 
the imagination and thinking about your future. Thinking about tomorrow, as early as tomorrow or the rest of the day, and thinking on out the rest of the year, on into the next century, on into the early years of the next century. A workshop like we're about to do helps call your attention to that so you can use your imagination to start prospecting for the future, what could be possible for you. We're affected by our dreams, our vision of the future. You got a problem? It's called anxiety. Here's the solution. It's called prayer. What's the result of prayer? Peace. Maybe you're like, Rich, okay, but you don't understand. You don't know my story. You don't know about my life right now. I ain't got no time for peace. You never met my boss. Can't get no peace over there. You don't know my husband. Ain't no peace in my home. You don't know my situation. You would be absolutely correct, absolutely right. I don't know all of those factors and all of those variables, yet I'm not sure if you're listening to me tonight. What the scripture says is that when we go to God in prayer, what happens is that we don't get man's peace, we get the peace of God. The peace of God is interesting because the peace of God transcends all understanding, meaning that God's peace is superior to your earthly situation. God's peace is illogical. So if you have a situation that doesn't make sense, good news, your God has peace that doesn't make sense. Listen, your situation might not change, but your soul will. When what you were guiding by goes away, and every day just looks the same and feels the same, now I get the feeling like this is endless. Now I get the feeling like maybe these chains are never going to break. This storm is never going to cease. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. What you go through doesn't determine where you end up. Who you listen to determines where you end up. Because I think right now, you are walking through a valley between two voices. One is wisdom, one is worry. One is gratitude, one is grumbling. One is blame, one is faith. Wait a minute. The opposite of faith is doubt. No, 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 no. Doubt doesn't keep you from having faith. Doubt gives you something to have faith for, but blame will block faith every time. Blame will always block faith. You want to make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Some people live in the past and let their life be continually pulled and influenced by the past. And yes, we must remember the past and review the past to make it useful to invest in the future. But here's the key. Make sure that the greatest pull on your life is the pull of the future. Now, if you're skimpy on your dreams, if you're skimpy on your objectives and your purposes, if that isn't very well planned, then it doesn't pull very hard. Then you have more of a tendency to be pulled by the past or to be pulled apart by events or circumstances or to be pulled apart by distractions. So in order to save yourself from being pulled apart by distractions or pulled back to the past, you want to now start really designing the future so that the greatest part of your attention and focus and pull, like a magnet, pulls you forward into the future to accomplish your goals. If you take a seed and throw it on the concrete and walk off, the sun just burn it up. You got to have dirt put on top of it. In my mind, it doesn't make sense that to grow something, you should dig a hole, put it down in there, and cover it with dirt. Logically, that don't make no sense to me. But oh, though, see, dirt is necessary for growth and development. Dirt builds character. Dirt gives you the push-through factor. Dirt makes you come with it when you don't feel like coming with it no more. All of y'all that had dirt thrown on you. And dirt ain't always what you want. It's somebody talking about you down on your job. It's somebody accusing you of something that you didn't do. It's somebody telling you you ain't gonna make it. That Everybody get dirt put on them. But see, when you're getting put under that stress, please know God is always working, so I smile. Because I know he back there. See, that dirt builds character in you. When they talking about you, it teaches you to withstand it. Then it gives you something to push through. So when you put the seed and you put the dirt on it, if you understand stress, stress really ain't just dirt. See, they don't call it dirt when they plant it. They call it soil. 
Because, see, soil has nutrients in it. What the nutrients, when people are talking about you, dogging you, lying on you, backbiting, stealing from you, they're actually putting nutrients in you. They're building character. You got character now. And now, the dirt is necessary so you can prove yourself. Everything you see above ground that blossoms and plants and grows and that's beautiful, it was underground one time. But if you're weak in learning to set goals, if you haven't really worked on this that we're going to work on, then that is a solution you need to consider. Goals are like a magnet. They pull. The stronger they are and the more purposeful they are, the bigger they are, the more unique they are, the stronger they pull. If you have excellent goals and high dreams, here's what they also do. They pull you through. Pull you through all kinds of down days, down seasons. They pull you through a winter of discontent. They pull you through distraction on every side. It says, look here, look here, look here. Strong, powerful dreams like a magnet pull you through that. Strong dreams and goals pull you through a disaster. Some people get swallowed by the disaster because they have nothing on the other side of the disaster to pull them through. A bad day can almost overwhelm you if you don't have something really purposeful to go for at the other side of that day at the other side of the difficult time, at the other side of the down time. If you've got plenty out there to attract and pull, it'll pull you through all these things. And very little of it will attach itself to you. You'll be able to get through some of the most difficult times if you have this spectacular vision ahead of you of where you're going and what you're going to accomplish. Getting through will be easy or easier. So, learning to set goals, it is an incredible experience. Once I learned it, it transformed my life forever. Being here today is an accomplishment of my goals. When I travel around the world and sit on an airplane, I say, I dreamed about this one day. I used to go to the airport and watch the planes fly away, and I said, one of these days, I'll be on one of those planes. I dreamed about it. I dreamed about the other side of the world. I'd never been to Italy, but I dreamed about it. I'd Never been to South Africa, but I dreamed about it. Sure enough, step by step and country by country and flight by flight, I started checking them off my list. It was the most exhilarating feeling. Powerful to set those goals, reach out there into the future, design something to the best of your ability, refine it as you go, tear it up periodically if you want to, set a whole new list. It's your life, it's your future. But now I would like to do it in a very simple, easy manner that you can follow so that you can use it for the future to pass on to your children. Or if you've got a little group that you train and teach or your management and salespeople, you can use this with others. So what I'm going to go through with you here is sort of a model, sort of if I rush you just a little bit on getting through this model, at least I will leave you with the model that you can use later and not only use later, but use later to pass on to someone else in some manner. So, having laid this background now, here's what I want you to do. Get a fresh piece of paper, and this is called now the workshop. And on this workshop now, I want you to write down the question and then do the exercise. First question, list what five things have you accomplished that you're already proud of? What five things have you already accomplished that you're proud of? Now, primarily what this is for is to, you know, give you credit for what you've already accomplished. Shelf said to me, Mr. Owen, you've already been setting goals. You know, you've already gone for something and you've achieved it. But you've probably done it haphazardly. You haven't done it with a real plan in mind. And you've accomplished some things. Now, if you start deliberately doing it, can you imagine how you can multiply the effect by 5, by 10, by 20, by 100? I finally got the message. So first of all, you wanted to make sure I got credit for the things that I had already accomplished, especially in my own mind. You know, whether it's an accomplishment to someone else doesn't matter now, just so you recognize it for yourself. Now that you've done that little workshop, here's the second question. This is going to take some time now. What do you want in the next 10 years? What do you want in the next 10 years? Now, under this, what do you want in the next 10 years? That is the question. I want you to make a list of at least 50 items. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to just write as fast as you can. Don't give any much detailed thought to it. 
of what you want in the next 10 years and just let your mind run free. Now, also remember this, this is not what you think you can get. This is what you want. If it all fell into place and you could have everything you wanted in the next 10 years, what would you take? If somebody promised you can have anything you want in the next 10 years, what do you want? I want you to approach it that way because it's not important to think, what do I think I can get? I want you to now think about what you want in the next 10 years and put them one under the other, not side by side, but one under the other because we're going to do something with this list when you finish. You don't have to just be shortchanged on this list. I mean, this list can go on and on and on. And if you're working this workshop and you've got plenty of time, you just, you know, give it plenty of time till everybody's pretty thoroughly, you know, ready now with this list. But now here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to go through the list now, one item at a time, write down the list. And I want you to give each item a one, a three, a five, or a 10 by saying, that's about a one year goal, that's about a three, that's about a five, that's about a 10. I want you to look at each item, write down the list and give it a one, three, five, or 10. Now, here's what I want you to do with this list. I want you to look at each item that you've numbered number one, and I want you to pick out the four most important and identify them somewhere. Either make a new list of the four most important one-year goals or circle them or put a star or something beside it. What are your four most important one-year goals? Now that you pick the four most important one-year goals, here's the next question. Why? Why are those four goals important to you? What are they going to do for you? What will they accomplish? Why did you pick those? Why? Why are those goals important? Just three or four sentences. If we don't have time to complete it, you can complete it later. If you have plenty of time doing this workshop, you just take the time. Why are those four goals important to you? Okay, put a little star there now that those little stars mean finish later. Okay, because you can continue on with this, you know, after, long after this workshop is finished and then use it as a model to teach. Remember, study, practice, teach. Now, make these notes. Next, when the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When the why gets stronger, the how gets easier. When people don't have strong, powerful goals, the how is almost impossible. The how is too difficult. How to do it seems like, you know, how can I ever accomplish this? The how starts getting easier and easier when the why gets bigger and bigger and stronger. Now make this note. Purpose is stronger than object. Purpose is stronger than object. Object can be powerful, object can be strong, but purpose is stronger than object. One of your objectives might have been a million dollar home to live in. Here's the big question, what for? And it's the what for that pulls stronger than the million dollar home. You know, a home is a home is a home. What for? What are, you, what are you gonna do with this place? Well, now we start with the details. And I want you to add this note. It works in communication, it works here too. The drama is in the details. The drama is in the details. Someone says, I've lost uh, 40 pounds in the last three months. We say, is that it? Those are the numbers, but what's the detail? How did you feel before? Well, let me tell you what. Now they start the drama by giving us the details. How do you feel now? Wow, what a difference, 40 pounds later. And this person starts to describe what it's like now versus what it was like before. The drama is in the details. This is what you've got to do. A million dollar home, what for? So everybody can see it from the street? That's okay, but there's gotta be some more reasons. What, you, what do you want to do with this home? And then you start to say, hey, it's gonna be the center of activity. You can't believe what's gonna go on in this home. And you just keep describing it. And that drama now starts to really tap your imagination. And imagination is the beginning of reality. You can't imagine how close imagination is to reality until you start practicing this craft of turning nothing into something, imagination into tangible, the real stuff. How close is the real stuff? You can't imagine how close. 
if you start tapping into this resource of your imagination so that your purpose becomes much stronger than the object. The object is powerful and it'll pull, but the purpose is unbelievable. We must all pay the price, but the price gets easy if the prize gets large. The price gets easy if the prize gets sufficient. It's like disciplines. What a small price to pay for good health. What an easy thing to do an apple a day. I mean, a few things gives you such an incredible return that the price almost disappears. Promise is stronger than object. You got that? The bigger and the more powerful the why, the how gets easier and easier and easier.